Well, hello again, and welcome to Topics of Light. We're so excited to be able to be here. I have two lovely women, one to my right and one to my left. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, lefty, she's, she's the, the lefty and she's the right. But anyway, we're glad to be here. We get excited about bringing Topics of Light because it's all about God's Word. It's our plan for our life. It's our manual. Uh, it is everything to us. So we are excited about this and we're excited about our topics. So our topics this session for the next four is going to be a series on heaven and hell. Heaven and hell. And depending on which way you're looking at going, uh, heaven can seem quite amazing to live between Christ's first coming and our rapture, be that individually or as a church. So I'm ex we're excited about that, but if you don't know him, then you are, you are looking at another alternative. And Jesus talked more about hell than he talked about heaven. Sure. And so we're going to start out by, first topic is how to go to hell. And uh, how to go to hell. And I'll never forget years ago when um, I was younger, I probably was about 21. And we went to a funeral of a young woman who was a bartender in town, and I went with her, one of her dear friends. And she, she was a bartender, and she had left the bar drunk. She had drove, driven, and she slammed right into a tree. She missed a curve, and she went right into a tree. And it was a sad, sad thing. And so we went to the funeral, and then they wanted to go where she used to work which was like a dinner bar uh, place. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget it, as long as I live, they lifted up a glass and they toasted her. But then also they said, man, she's in hell parting away somebody. And I thought, no, what little I knew back then, which was little, I knew that hell is not one big party. It is not one big party. And I pray she didn't go there. She didn't go there. I didn't know her real well. But I pray that she didn't go there because she would have been there for um, 40 years, 40 years by now. So this is what we're going to talk about, how to go to hell. We have some areas we don't profess to be experts on everything, but we are going to talk about what the Word of God says. So we're going to start by looking at some areas that can lead you, that could lead you to hell. And so that's what we're going to start with. And so, Gloria, uh, why don't you lead us? Why don't you lead us out with one of the areas that you know might not be so good we're involved in That's on right. this road? Yielding to temptation. Yielding to temptation. Uh, I was thinking about this kind of in two stages. Before you get born again, there will be a temptation to believe that you're okay. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I don't need a savior. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm a good person. And I've, I've been faithful to my, my husband and I've raised my kids and I don't kick my dog. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, you think about all these good things you've done and what you don't realize is that the requirement is perfection. Mm -hmm. And nobody, I mean, nobody except Jesus reached perfection. And so we need a savior. And so you'll be tempted to believe some things. The enemy will come along with you and say, oh, well, you know, you just fade into black. There's no eternal life. There's no heaven. There's no hell. Lie. Lie. I mean, I'm just telling you. So, tempted to believe some things. Okay, so let's say that you get past that, you get born again. And then, here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, now you're charted, and you're on your way to heaven, and here comes the enemy again. And so, once again, we've talked about this so many times. Renewal of the mind. You've got to renew your mind. Because how you think is going to determine how you talk and how you act, and it will determine your destiny. And so I, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So you've got to, you've got to know who you are in Christ as you're growing up. You've got to know yourself. You know, uh, sometimes you have to get over yourself. You have to get past what you've been, what you've done. It's in the past. If it's under the blood of Jesus, it's taken care of. Uh, so when the enemy comes and talks, he's going to come and with a suggestion that's going to knock on your weaknesses. He's also, also going to knock on your strengths and try to get you off the path there, your callings and things like that. We just resist temptation. We simply say no to sin. 
I mean, the, the temptation is not sin, but if you go with it and you act upon it, now you've sinned. It's a violation of life. And so we simply say no to sin because sin is hooked to death. And that death is hooked to eternal a separation from the Father. Yeah. And so the, the answer is absolutely no. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yielding to any impulse. That's right. Never, ne never questioning an impulse. That's right. Never questioning any of that. Jesse Plant DePlantis said this, I give myself a reality check and ask myself, what in hell do I want? My answer always is nothing. There is nothing that the devil has to offer me that is better than God. Amen. Nothing, Amen. nothing. His offer may look good, but it's not good. The grass may be green, but it's sitting over a sewer. If it's not from God, it can seem pretty on the outside, but it's rotten. And people that get caught up in that, any of us who've been caught up in a sinful lifestyle know that. It might look greener, but there's a lot of pain and suffering and it isn't. So Amen. yielding to temptation isn't, isn't a good road. No. It's not a good road. Fact, no. No, no, we all agree. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah. Amber's agreeing too, so we all agree. <laughs> yeah. So then um, there's another one. There's another area. Uh, Amber, why don't you share that one? Um, well, it's about crucifying our flesh. So if I choose to not crucify my flesh, then I can fall into all kinds of destruction because the fleshly ways are opposite of what God is inside of us. So if I'm not led by the Holy Spirit inside of me and listening to the Holy Spirit and only doing what I feel like I need to do and what my flesh is telling me to do and um, all of those things, it can be destructive lifestyle and um you know it's and it's can lead me to like this uh, sin nature i mean we're mm -hmm. when we're born into the world we have a sin nature but when we get born again and have jesus then we have his nature and mm -hmm. so it's a battlefield because sometimes you know our flesh is, is screaming loud like you know you really want this but the holy spirit's like no you know and of course the holy spirit lines up with the word of god mm -hmm. so Following, following the Holy Spirit keeps us on the narrow path mm -hmm. and that leads us to eternity, eternal life because he said that we have to um, you know, abide by the kingdom in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. So even though you get born again and you have Jesus, you still have to maintain your lifestyle with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so it's a battlefield, but it helps to have people to be accountable to and then of course to listen to the Holy Spirit inside of us because that leads to life and blessings and mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah, everything that we want to participate in our life, right? Everything yeah. that God and has our, for us. Our right. emotions. And, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yielding to temptation, everybody's dealing with that, not yielding to temptation, failure to crucify our flesh daily. And then there's a big one that a lot of people are involved in right now. And you see it and you hear it in the way we, we can talk this, we can hear this. What do you think that third one is, Gloria? Well, there's a lot of deception going yeah. on, a lot of confusion and deception. And, and God is not the author of confusion and he's also not the deceiver. That the Bible's clear on that. Satan is the deceiver. The enemy is. And so we can deceive ourselves once again into thinking that, well, uh, God loves me or God is love. And so he would never send anybody to hell. So if I love God, then I can go about my life and do what I want to do and live the way I want to live. And he'll be okay because he loves me. Well, the truth of the matter is he does. Yes, he he does, does love you. Yes. Uh, but Jesus was very clear on that. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. And so we need to walk with this as our boundary. This is our plumb line right here. Mm -hmm. And if God has said no, it's a big fat no. And so if I create a God of acceptance and no judgment in my mind and I create that image for me, I've deceived myself into thinking that I'm okay, that I don't need to line up. And then what, what do they do or what would people do? You search out people who believe and support what you believe. Right. 
that's what you do. Instead of you, you dig into the word, you begin to see it. You come to a church who teaches the full word of God and your toes, you get a little uncomfortable sometimes, but the Lord's talking saying, oh, they pull that back a little bit. Oh, we need to get out of there. You know what I'm saying? And he gives us, he, he convicts us in order, but for our good. Mm -hmm. for our good because the devil is a deceiver and he will come along and try to convince you of things that simply are not true in the word that's why we have to be in the word daily we have to read it daily because deception is coming it is mm -hmm. coming i mean he's he's going to introduce a thought that is non-scriptural it's right. just the way it is right and then you hear people who say well life is better you know, that's just a bunch of control, right? right. That's just a that's bunch for of control. Young kids and old people. Yeah. That's for, yeah. Young kids and old people. But in, in the, the thought is that following God is not fun or that it's not good or it's not a blessing. And so I'm with Jesse DePlantis. What in hell do we want? Right. Really, what in hell do we want? And then when people get deceived, we, get, we can get into sin. And sin will take us that's the saying and we've all heard it sin will take you farther than you want to go it will keep you longer than you want to stay and it will charge you more than you want to pay sin won't ask for too much in the beginning but in the end it will steal everything you've got and that's when sin goes to seed yep. and many many people who many people including myself you don't start out to um, get off the road and get into a path of deception, but you just yield one little bit, one little bit. And the Holy Spirit is saying, uh, convicting you, you're just getting a little bit of a no, don't do that, don't say that, don't go there. No, that's not for you, that's not for you, right? Mm -hmm. But you bypass that on little bits, and there you are. And you're resisting the wrong thing. Yes. You're resisting the yes. leading of God as opposed to the temptation. Right, mm -hmm. right. And then the fourth area we want to talk about today, and uh, we're going to turn it over to Amber because she's also going to lead you in a prayer. If you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, she's also at the end of this going to lead you in a prayer that you can be sure. You can be sure that you're not going to go to hell. But what's that fourth area we wanted to talk about today as well? Refusing to repent and failure to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. So we know, well, not everybody knows this, but Jesus is the only way to heaven. And it was through his blood that any of us could get to heaven. And when he died on the cross, he made a way for us to get to our heavenly father. And we can only know him through Jesus. And so when we repent, that means we turn away from our sins. We ask God to forgive us and we choose to walk with Jesus and away from those things that we were doing and from sin. And so um, if you resist and you're refusing and you're rebelling and you don't wanna come to the Lord, he's still waiting with open arms, but it's, it's a path that's it's not good because you know, if we have eternity and if you think about eternity, that's forever. And so either you can choose to walk with Jesus, to go with Jesus to heaven forever, or you can choose to go to hell forever. And hell is a place of, I don't want anyone to go there. It's, it's horrible. It's, it's torture 24 seven, you know, there's no, nothing good there. And God didn't want anyone to go there. That's why he sent his son Jesus for us. And so, but we have a choice to make. He's not gonna force us to do anything. He gave us a free will. So, but he wants you to come to heaven with him. And so if you wanna receive Jesus, um, I'm gonna pray a prayer and you can just repeat this after me. And this is just between you and God. And it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter where you are, as long as you acknowledge Jesus as Lord. But when you pray this prayer, then you're going to be receiving Jesus and building your relationship with him. So um, just repeat this after me. Father, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins, to forgive me of my sins. 
I ask you, Jesus, I ask, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart, to, to come, come into, into my, my heart, heart, and set me free, and set, set me free. free. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to walk in your ways, to walk, walk in your ways, and not my own, and not my own. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in my life, for what, what you're doing, doing in my life. life. Help me to walk with you. Help, Help me to walk with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Amber. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for Topics of Light. Um, our, next, our next session, we're going to talk about what is hell like. And uh, so you won't want to miss that one either. So have a blessed day, and we look forward to seeing you soon.